This is a demonstration of the Wave Interference Interactive Illustration from SciencePrimer.com. A link to the illustration can be found in the video description. The illustration explores constructive and destructive interference by observing the movement as two waves pass each other moving in opposite directions. When the page first loads, the illustration shows one set of waves to the left. Their wavelength and wave height are shown up here. Wavelength is 4 meters, wave height is 20 meters. There is no reverse wave right now because the wave height to the right is set to none. All of these settings can be changed with these selectors. In the middle is an observer. Its position is shown a bit lower to the right. The number is relative to the center of the illustration. Center is zero, left is negative, and right is positive. The chart at the bottom plots the position of the observer as the wave moves across the screen. Three things can be charted. Movement due to the forward wave, shown in green. Movement due to the reverse wave, shown in blue a movement and the actual movement shown in black. To move the wave, click Start. When the wave hits the observer, the graph begins to show the movement. Since no rever there is no reverse wave, the movement due to the forward wave and the combined wave are the same. To observe interference, we can just create a reverse wave. To begin with, we will hide the combined and show both the reverse and the forward wave. With these settings, these two waves will be in phase when they meet the observer. This will result in constructive interference. by showing just the two waves and then adding the combined. We can see the features of this interaction. Each wave individually is equal to the other because their wavelengths and wave heights are the same and they are in phase. So that when you show the actual movement, it's constructive interference, the actual movement of the observer is greater than the height of each of the individual waves contributing to the movement. Once the waves move past each other, they return to their original size. By moving the observer one meter, which in this case is one quarter of the wavelength, and not changing anything else, we can demonstrate destructive interference. This destructive interference causes the observer to not move as the two waves pass the spot occupied by the observer can see that the waves are completely out of phase, which m results in a net motion of zero for the observer. These are the two end conditions. Different patterns can be seen by moving the observer to other positions or by changing the wave heights and wavelengths of each wave. A particular pattern I'd like to call attention to is the one created when one wave has half the wavelength of the other. In this case, the forward wave has a wavelength of 4 meters. The reverse wave's wavelength is 2 meters. The observer is positioned in the middle. The combined wave alternates between constructive interference and destructive interference. 
Those of you familiar with earth science or tidal patterns may recognize this as a semi-diurnal tidal pattern. It's a nice example of how you can get complex patterns from wave interactions. Again, once the waves pass each other, they are no longer interacting and they return to their original sizes.